Well, with that being said, we have our first reporter, Zeke Miller from the Associated Press, questioning her on the sentencing laws that Joe Biden was going to veto, but now he's going to sign off on from Washington, D.C. Let's go ahead and roll it. Welcome back here. Um, uh, President, just wait a couple minutes. Maybe two minutes ago regarding the D.C. home rule saying he would sign the resolutions that should have had the Senate to overturn the, the changes to D.C.'s criminal code. Uh, the president has spoken a bit about his support for D.C. state in the past, but you know, why does he believe that he uh, should step in where the D.C., where the, the residents of D.C.'s elected representatives you know, pass these changes? Uh, why does he believe that his he should substitute his wisdom and judgment for theirs? So look, I mean, just to double down and triple down on what the president has said for decades, which is that uh, he believes every every city uh, should have their the right to self government. <coughs> that is still is the same case that hasn't uh, that hasn't changed anything. He has long <coughs> believed that D.C. statehood uh, should be uh, something that the residents of D.C. should be allowed. Uh, again, that hasn't changed. But this is different. The way that we see this is uh, it's very different. This is uh, the D.C. Council put changes forward over the mayor's objections, and the president doesn't support changes like lowering penalties for carjacking. So this piece is different. But again, it doesn't change the administration strongly supporting H.R. 50 uh, which would have made uh, D.C. the 51st state. Uh, that is something that he still very much uh, supports. Uh I just want to pause it and we'll continue because if you're confused, just as I am, based on what she's saying, that's okay because we are all confused. And it's not, again, it's not just us. It's also the reporters in the room. And we'll get to it because, boy, oh, boy, they start hashing out here going, how does that make sense? You can't have both happen at the same time. All the while, she will say both can happen at the exact same time. If that doesn't make sense, it will in just one moment. Let's continue. Uh, and we're going to continue to call on, ca on Congress uh, to provide a swift and orderly transition to statehood for the uh, people who live here in, in D.C. I thought you explain a little bit why this is different, but just because it's different. The president believes that every city should have the right to self-government, except if he, believe, if he disagrees with their, the outcomes of their, of their governing I, process. Look, one thing that the president believes in is say, making sure that the streets in America and communities across the country are safe. That includes D.C. That does not change. That's why he puts forward a historic piece uh, of historic plan uh, that uh, he hopes uh, Republicans in Congress would support, uh, which is his Safer uh, America plan. That is something that the president has led. When you think about uh, keeping communities safe, when you think about uh, uh, making sure that uh, we're also uh, protecting our law enforcement and making sure that uh, we have law enforcement in communities that continue to keep uh, communities safe, that's something that he has led on. So when it comes to what this proposal brings forth, uh, which is, you know, really uh, lowering penalties penalties for carjacking, that's not going to, he doesn't believe that's going to keep our community safe. So the if the bill comes, uh, he's going to take action, as he said. Just another step, because this, this, the principle matter, the president's making a principled statement that he supports the city self I think, two, I think those then, two things, trying to overturn their, their those, two, those two things can both, two things could exist at the same time, right? We've heard that throughout our lives, right? We'll I'm sorry, I just don't think they can happen at the same time. You can't push one messaging and then you're gonna switch it and do the exact opposite that contradicts the first piece of messaging. So you can say that you're for policing and for all these things, but you're gonna veto it, but then at the same time, you're gonna inject yourself into that design of the way that they do things in Washington, D.C. and kind of overreach and step over the bounds of the elected officials of that area to go with the narrative that you want or not to go with the narrative that you want. I mean, you can't have both at the same time, but she's gonna say that you can somehow. When we hear, uh, when we hear uh, things that we may not disagree, we may not agree with, that they both could exist at the same time, which is the president still thinks that uh, D.C. should become uh, the 51st state. That is something that he has supported for decades, not just these last couple of years. But there is, he feels as president, he has the obligation as well to keep America's cities safe, to keep communities safe. And this is one step in, in a way to do that. That's it. Okay, just so. It continues here because when she starts saying both can happen at the same time, everybody's ears are kind of perked up going, well, that doesn't make sense. How is that possible? And so we have Justin here that's going to question her on this and kind of even basically debate her going, look, they both can't happen. And he's speaking logic and she's saying that she's being clear, but she's not being clear as we've always hear her saying. But everybody, again, is confused. But let's hear the kind of the explanation that he has to say, his question and what she has to say. That's it. Okay, Justin. Sorry, I just want to look back on that really quickly. Yeah. So is the principle here that the president believes in self-rule and autonomy, except if he believes the D.C. is passing laws that would 
leave its residents on I safe think, and I don't think I don't think it's every piece of legislation. This is going to come to his desk, and he has a decision to make for the people of D.C., right? He has he actually has a decision that is going to be put in front of him. Well, on decision now, yeah. it's a precedent that he's setting. And, I, you know, in the in the SAP that you guys issued, it said Congress should respect the district's autonomy to govern their local affairs for too long. Washington residents have been deprived full representation and the principle of taxation without representation. It, there is obviously a, a sort of immediate question about whether these changes done by the D.C. Council are smart or good policy, but there's also a principle about when the president would intervene to overrule the elected representatives. I, I get the I get the question, Justin. I really do. And what I'm saying to you is that the president supports D.C. statehood. That has not changed. That is something that he has supported for the past two decades or more. Uh, certainly, he's he was very clear about that during the campaign. We've been very clear about that the last two years. The president is being put. This piece of legislation is being put forward to him. That's going to become law, clearly, right? Once he signs it, and it's a decision that he gets to make, right? To protect communities, to protect communities across the country, uh, and this is a way that he believes that he can do that. He believes by 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 signing in this into law uh, that it will protect communities, and so that matters. That matters. We. You all were asking me. The the no, I'm saying issue. I'm saying both things can exist at the same time. I'm you can't. Not sure that they can. Okay. <laughs> no. If I'm, if I'm being no, honest, either no, no. you can make decisions for yourself, or I will make decisions for you. But that he's I believe he, in your he, best he what, the decision. Exactly, exactly. Packaged it even better than what I said earlier. Either you can decide what you want, or somebody's going to decide on your behalf, and that person's going to decide on behalf doesn't actually go with the interest that you want. They might go with the interest that they want, which is happening with Joe Biden. Where before he said he was going to veto it, which is what we talked about in yesterday's episode, but now he's saying he's going to sign off on it. So why why did he make the change? We'll get to that in just one moment. That he is making, he's making he's making it for the people of D.C. Right when by making sure. That, just, yeah, like but no, I understand that. But he this is being presented to him, right? This is a, being presented to him on signing this into law. And if you look at what is being presented to him. The mayor actually disagreed with what the D.C. Council put, put forward. And so now this is an opportunity to protect the community. That's the way the president sees this, to protect the community. Okay, I, I wanted to ask. So this still continues, you guys. Like I said, everybody's confused because Joe Biden's like a reed in the wind. On one end, he's going to say that he's going to veto it. Then on the other end, he says he's going to change it. So we have somebody picking up on this whole thing here, Peter Alexander of NBC News, and he questions her on that very thing that I just said. Let's see what she has to say. I just want to follow up on Kevin's first question about the D.C. crime law. Again, just to be clear, the White House put out a statement saying that the president did not support it. But now from the podium, you're saying that... Well, not, the president as well, right? Not just yeah, me. Right, fine. Yep. You, the podium, you represent the president, but fine. To be clear, no, but you heard directly from the president. Just want to make sure that that is that is clear. Even better, makes it even better. That, right? So That's why what I'm the, saying it makes it even better. You heard it directly from the president. I'll ask you cleanly. Why would the White House say he does not support it, and then he would say he is not vetoing it? Instead, he is signing it. Which is to say, why should Americans believe the White House when it says it doesn't support something if the president's going to sign it? No less. I understand. Folks, I'm sorry, but that sounds like a Peter Ducey question right there. That sounds like a Fox News question. And that's why I advocate for these reporters a lot, because it's a freaking great question. Phenomenal question from Peter Alexander of NBC News here. Let's continue. The question, Peter, I'm just telling you at this moment where we are currently uh, with this uh, piece of legislation that is going to be coming, this, that's coming from the Senate, that's going to be coming to the president's desk, uh, he, he will sign it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it is because what is different about this uh, signing it is it as I mentioned before uh, the DC Council put forward was put forward over the mayor's objections and the president wants to make sure that communities even in DC the Americans in DC feel safe so let me get to the second half of that question which is why should Americans believe the White House when it says it doesn't support something when the president's going to sign it no less I think what the, the American people who I just mentioned to to, uh, uh, to one of your colleagues I think the American people know who Joe Biden is I think they fundamentally hold on let me uh, wait <laughs> you it is so remarkable. I think people know who Joe Biden is. <laughs> Joe Biden doesn't even know who Joe Biden is. I mean, come on, lady. 
This is what they do, right? They go, well, just watch him. When everybody's talking about his physical and mental health, well, just watch him. I mean, he said the same thing. So we watched him, and he's fumbling through his words. He's fighting with his teleprompter all the time. He's wandering off. The Secret Service has to sit there and kind of hurt him like a piece of cattle. He don't know what's going on. We're all watching everything here. Joe Biden sucks. He doesn't know what's going on up here. And also, look, he's a read in the wind. On one end, he's going to vote for something or at least veto it. And then he's going to vote for it and push it through. So, you know. It's it's so baffling. Everybody in there is completely confused, by the way. I know I keep repeating myself, but it, I'm only showing you guys a few clips of this. The whole room was questioning her on this whole switcheroo here on votes of when he's going to go against it. And now he's going to go for it. Uh, you know, whatever. You, got, you have your eyebrows moving and bleeding in. So I just want to make sure you give me a second to answer. I know. I'm just saying. You have this, this, you get, you get really excited, Peter. So I just want to make sure, I, make sure I know. Oh my gosh. They're so exciting. Thrilling, thrilling. No, but with all seriousness, look, the, the American people know who Joe Biden is. He's been around for some time, right? Uh, they fundamentally know who he is as a person. The president, especially these last two years, have always, always put the American people first. And that's what they should know. That's what they should take away, that he's putting. I'm sorry. And maybe she'll restate what she just said. But did I just hear that she said that Joe Biden puts Americans first? Did I hear that correctly? Because the Democrats want illegal aliens to vote that don't belong here in the first place. I haven't done their paperwork, came here illegally. Joe Biden puts other countries first. That's why he was in Ukraine with Zelensky or in Poland rather than here in Ohio. He puts illegal aliens in hotel rooms before he puts our vets or homeless in hotel rooms. He builds entire encampments with revolving menus, laundry services, showers, bedding, clothing, revolving menu, menu that's catered to their culture, Xboxes, cell phones, phones in general, plasma TVs, all couches, rugs. I mean, we've done the videotape on it for aliens, but none for our veterans or actual Americans. I mean, it's time and time again that they don't put Americans first, but you're going to sit there and say that they do. And But we're supposed to watch everything. We know who Joe Biden is. Yeah, we know who Joe Biden is. He's a freaking liar. He's a politician and he sucks at his job. Uh, in this case, the safety of uh, of the people of D.C. first, and he is always going to do that. Let me ask you one separate question sure. if I can. So... <laughs> This is what's interesting here. It's like I said, everybody's confused and we're going to cut it off with that moment, not cut off the press briefing, but we're going to cut off the moment where at least. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the bald Brad show. If you did make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.